In a previous video in our series on vector analysis, we had an introductory video concerning the uh, del operator and the gradient vector. And we have derived this equation that the differential change of a scalar function is equal to the dot product of its gradient with the differential displacement in the position vector. And now we're going to use that knowledge in this video to discuss uh, directional derivatives. Now, to get started, let's say that we're just in a two-dimensional yz plane, and we have a curve, and we have two position vectors going out to the curve, r1 and r2. These are very close together, so that the distance from r1 to r2 is just a differential displacement, dr, and this dr this displacement vector is tangent to the curve at this point. And in fact, this has a magnitude that is equal to a differential um, arc length element. And we can show that pretty straight, uh, pretty quickly here. It's pretty straightforward. Let's say we're in three-dimensional space. This is the equation for a position vector in three dimensions. So the differential displacement of it would be dxi plus dyj plus dzk. Now in three dimensions, a differential arc length is this, the square root of dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. Well, if we take the dot product of this with itself, we have dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. So the magnitude of dr, that's the square root of this, which is a differential arc length. So this dr divided by ds is a unit vector, but it's a unit vector that is tangent to the curve. So it's a unit tangential vector. So now let's go back to our equation up here and divide both sides of the equation by ds. Then we have this expression. This means that this is the rate of change of the scalar in the direction of this unit tangential vector. In fact, let's write this as the tangential vector. Here, like this. So again, this is the rate of change of a scalar in the direction of a unit tangential vector. When we say a unit tangential vector, we mean at a certain position of a curve or a surface. And to get a better feel as to how this works out, let's just take an example. Suppose we have a three-dimensional surface. Say it's something like x squared times z plus 2x y squared plus y z squared. And this is equal to some constant. So our scalar is this. Obviously, our scalar is a function of x, y, and z. And it's equal to a constant. So this is some surface in three-dimensional space. Now, let's say on the surface, we're at the point x is 1, y is 2, z is minus 1, and also on this surface there's a vector a. Let's say it looks like this, 2i plus 3j minus 4k. And suppose now we're on this surface at this point and we're asked to find 
what is the rate of change of the scalar and the direction of this vector? So the way we can think of this problem visually let's draw a two-dimensional axis. We have some surface here and on the surface is a vector A or perhaps going right through it and then we're at a point on the surface here we want to know if we're standing at that point what would be the rate of change of the scalar and the direction of this vector. Well thinking of this now in terms of what we just discussed before the first thing we want to do is get our vector not as A but as unit vector A. So we would divide A by the square root of 16 plus by the square root of 29. So multiply this by 1 over the square root of 29 and that will be the unit vector A. Now this scalar has a gradient associated with it. We can certainly construct one and if we're standing at say here at this point and here's the scalar or here is the gradient of the scalar then to find the rate of change of our scalar in the direction of this unit vector A let me make this a unit vector then we take the dot product of the gradient evaluated at this point with the unit vector A just like we did here. So we have unit vector A now we have to find the gradient of our scalar so we have to take some partial derivatives so let's do that and let's write this more neatly so we'll erase all of this so the unit vector A and had this expression 1 over the square root of 29 times 2i plus 3j minus 4k. Now we have to find the gradient of psi. So that means taking the partial derivative of psi with respect to x times the unit vector i then take another partial derivative with respect to y times the unit vector j plus our final partial derivative with respect to z times the unit vector k and this is our scalar here. So taking the partial of this with respect to x, we will have 2xz plus 2y squared. So this will equal 2xz plus 2y squared. times i. Again that's just taking the partial derivative of this with respect to x. 2xz plus 2y squared. Now take the partial with respect to y and that will give us 4xy plus z squared. times the unit vector j. Now we take the partial of psi with respect to z and that will be x squared plus 2yz.
times the unit vector k. So this is the gradient of our scalar function, psi. We need to evaluate this when x equals 1, y equals 2, z equals minus 1. So we plug those numbers into here, and the expression that we get is this is equal to 6i plus 9 times j minus 3 times k. And what do we want to do with this? We want to take the dot product of this with the unit vector a. That's supposed to be a unit vector. So let's write this out then. We will have del psi dot product with the unit vector a. That will equal 6i plus 9j minus 3k The unit vector A is this, 1 over the square root of 29, 2i plus 3j minus 4k. So take this dot product and we have i dot i 1 over the square root of 29 times 6 times 2 is 12 j dot j 9 times 3 is 27 k dot k minus 4 times minus 3 is plus 12 so this is 24 plus 27 that equals 51 divided by the square root of 29. So what we're saying then is that, again, just to try to sketch this out, we got a three-dimensional surface, a unit vector A, and then gradient at the point 1, 2, minus 1. We took the dot part of this with this, and that gave us then the rate of change of our scalar psi in the direction of that unit vector A, and that's the directional derivative. So that's it for this video. Come back and join us for another video, and we'll see if we can work another example involving the directional derivative.